hello and welcome again in this uh, small exercise I'm going to show you how to calculate volume and weight of soil using simple gridding method um, once again I'm going to follow the exercise that's actually outlined in the book Hydrogeology and Groundwater Modeling by Nathan Kresik and uh, I'm going to simplify the problem that, that he has in his book. Uh, it is that in the book, uh, the version I'm using, it's on page 5, and it's called the volume and weight of contaminated soil. So, let's uh, What we're going to do, we will find the volume and weight of soil contaminated by a uh, chemical spill as I said as I said just a little bit ago the problem has been presented in hydrogeology and groundwater modeling book by Nathan Gresick and I'm going to produce a simplified version of the problem uh, he has used a little bit uh, complex method of uh, jacking the volume I'm going to just simplify a little bit uh, to make it make it a little bit li little bit simpler uh, and he has used a surfer program to to create the grids and do the volume calculations initially I thought I cannot use it because I don't have surfers surfer full person but I do have a demo person and once I tried I I, I figured out that I don't need the full surfer version to do this exercise. I can still create my grids and do my volume calculations with the demo version. So I'm going to stick to surfer. I use the Carlson uh, software a lot too, and I can do the same thing with the Carlson also. Uh, let's see the information that that he has provided for us in his in the problem. What he has given us is a XYZ database for the soil points. Uh, it's like an example database. You have grids uh, 200 by 200 grids here. And the soil points, they, they are uh, equally spaced. And let me open up the XYZ file for a second. This is kind of the XYZ file that that he has provided. He has given us the X let me make that a little bit uh, bigger size, make it sixteen, okay? So he has given us the X coordinate, Y coordinate, top elevation of the surface and bottom elevation of contaminated soil he has given us the soil thickness which you can also get with just using a formula this top elevation minus bottom elevation should give you this and this is something else I was going to add if I'm if I want to use the Carlson software so sure. he has provided this one two three four five different columns okay So, and he has given some some information about the soil. He said the soil is composed of mainly kaolinite, almost 65 percent. We have about 25, 20 percent of potash feldspar and about 15 percent of quartz. And this information is important because uh, we have to come up with a, a specific density for the soil particles within the soil, and we'll use weighted average. To, to calculate a weighted average specific density or specific gravity for the soil and I'll, I'll show you that how to do that in Excel he has also given us uh, the porosity of the soil and it's 14% uh, that's also important to know because uh, when you're calcula calculating the tonnage you can ignore that 14% first so the solids is act actually about 86 percent 
and within the 40 14 percent only 22 percent is saturated so you have to calculate uh, the volume of water and with a much less uh, specific gravity so let's go to the next step okay so our goal in this exercise is to calculate the volume of contaminated soil and we're going to use the surfer to create the grids for the surfaces of interest that would be the top surface and the bottom surface of the contaminated soil and we'll do we'll calculate the volume between the two grids uh, what I typically do I, I create another grid uh, subtracting the top elevation from the bottom elevation and use that grid to, to calculate my volume and I'll show you that how to do that too and steps prepare a spreadsheet or a text file so I, I already got that and actually uh, you can also see that I have I have created some text file this which one is the text file here we go should have a text file here yeah, this that's all volume XYZ text. This is the text file that I'm I'm using for for my for my surfer. Okay, and that's exactly the same database that uh, that's in the hydrogeology and groundwater modeling book. Um, so the next step would be to import the database to Surfer or Carlson and I already have my my Surfer open let's uh, close everything maybe restart it just to show you how to do that um, okay it's the demo Surfer demo 11 I click on that it's a demo version so it's not a fully functional version so to import the grid I'm just going to go to the grid and you see the data tab here I'm going to click on it and I'm going to select that txt file solve volume xyz txt and open it start import at row 1 no I don't want uh, well yes I want to import one and everything looks good so click OK here then this is the first window it's asking what to grid column A is X column B is Y and column B column, column C is the top elevation and I want to make my grid so starting at 0 maximum at 200 and 5 spacing so we have 41 nodes I will do the same thing for the Y 0 200 and 5 and you, you can change those uh, spacing a uh, minimum maximum value if you want to but for our our project that's that's what we're gonna use and you here you can uh, put the name of your grid files and I have already created the grid it's called the top grid and when I'm done and just hit OK to create the top grid when you're done go through the same process again and this time instead of choosing column C choose column D and column D we know it's column D is the bottom elevation okay so and do the same thing 0 200 5 0 200 and 5 and, and another thing we're using creating method because that's what was used uh, in the in the textbook and this time we are gonna save it as the bottom grid and once you do that hit ok so you have two grids now and you can go to the map then new then contour map just to see how how does it look like okay 
if you just open it you see this is the top grade elevation so this is pretty much the surface and if you click on this button over there on the left you can have it turn on or turned off you can check the same thing with uh, control map and then check out the bottom control that's what it looks like and you can also turn off the bottom com bottom control and what I did I went to the grid and I did what did I do math okay when I click on math and then I added grid top grid and the bottom grid and over here what I did I did top grid minus the bottom grid so A minus B and and save my output grid in out.grd file okay and you can also also grid the out.grd file which is the uh, a grid that contains the difference between the top and the bottom so it's basically contain the thickness of this of the contaminated soil and if you open it here is the contour of your contaminated soil so kind of you can you can see that in the center area your contamination is the highest is 4.250 right there a little bit more over here and as you go pretty much in every other direction your thickness of your soil contaminated soil is going down now in the book uh, he has like a boundary for this contaminated area and he is creating a, a boundary exactly where he is going to excavate the soil so it's kind of a little bit more expensive if you try to uh, more you know intensive kind of more difficult if you if you want to exactly follow the example he has he names Neven has in his book but in in our example I'm just going to assume that we can we are going to we, we are going to excavate every bit of the soil sample within this grid so that 200 by 200 feet grid that I have we're going to excavate every bit of the soil sample not any more more than that okay so we already have a grid file for the soil where if we take a surface say a zero surface and figure out the volume of, of, of my soil thickness we will know how much to to excavate to do that you go to the grid once again go to the volume then just check out your out dot grd file click on it hit open and then you can put a lower surface but it's already a difference between the two grids so I'm ju just going to get uh, my volume from a zero elevation okay and hit ok I will give you an e window and it's it's pretty fast and here's my total volume here they have done uh, volume calculation in three different methods and it's about 32651 uh, and these are all in in feet so a volume it's in it's in cubic feet so now let's go and look, take a look at our excel so once again wet uh, 32561 let's make sure that's the 32561 that's exactly the volume in, in, in feet cube that we have determined from the surface surface grid. Let's check out my uh, PowerPoint just just for a second. So we did all that. We we created the uh, ASCII file. We imported that into surface. Created grid files at the top, grid files for the bottom, and created a grid for top minus bottom grid and did a uh, volume calculation from zero elevation and the top minus bottom grid okay now uh, in in the book mr neven came up with 33445 uh, cubic feet of soil and 
and I I came up with 32651 so it's even though I'm not using his exact boundary but our volumes are still pretty close so I'm, I'm kind of happy one thing I'm not completely happy is when he converted his cubic feet to cubic meters he made a really bad mistake uh, unit conversion mistake the 33445 feet cube is actually only 947 meter cube and not 3110 cubic meters okay so every if you're following the book every calculation from here down is wrong in the book don't go by the numbers and and figure out your calculate con do your own unit conversions and 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 do your own math okay now let's go back to our right unit conversion uh excel spreadsheet and here's my cubic cubic fit number and we know that uh, 14 percent is our porosity so we can calculate the volume of the voids and once we know that we can subtract the volume of the void from the total volume to get the volume of the solid and now we can convert the volume of the solid which is in square feet to cubic centimeter and then multiply it by my gravity which is gram per cubic centimeter to get my weight in gram and divide that by 10 to the power 6 to get tons and for the volume of water only 14 percent of the void is water so if you apply 14 percent uh, I'm sorry 22 percent to this number 4571 you get 1006 and that uh, convert cubic meter that's 28 cubic centimeter to this number and apply 1 gram per cc mm -hmm. for the water and figure out you, you have only 28 tons of water and 2,070 tons of uh, solids within your contaminated area. Now, uh, one other note that I'm going to add quickly, we already had our soil you know composition we had 65 percent kaolinite and its specific gravity is about 2.6 we had 20 percent of potash phosphor with a specific gravity of 2.58 and we have about 15 percent of quartz with specific gravity 2.65 now you just multiply this with the specific gravity to figure out the weighted contribution of kaolinite to the specific weight of the total sample do the same thing here and this one and then add these three up to get your weighted average for the sample so if you have a soil analysis you would like to like to calculate your weighted average specific gravity of the sample this way and then apply this weighted average number of your soil sample to the volume of solid and you want to apply uh, what an average of water to the volume of water so we have a total of 2099 tons of material that we need to excavate and remove uh, once again I'm going to put this uh, spreadsheet on my website coolgeology.com uh, under tools and put this video too if you have any questions just feel free to uh, shoot me an email. Once again, thank you very much for listening. Uh, See you next time. Bye-bye.